high in the night sky above a nation's capital, down flashes a shooting megastar on a mission of mercy. Zeroing in on her rooftop helipad, bearing priceless gifts of caring and sharing, she touches down to touch the hearts of her celebrity guests who tremble in anticipation in her luxury penthouse below. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Dame Edna Experience with Dame Edna Everidge. Tribute to the 60s, my gorgeous psychedelic cousin. Isn't it beautiful? Welcome to Everidge Towers, my gorgeous penthouse accommodation. And I've got all mod cons here, including an orchestra. Isn't that rather unusual? Hello, Laurie. Lovely to see you. Yes, I have an orchestra in my own home. And, spookily enough, an audience. That's very unusual. Yes, people are part of my soft furnishings here. <laughs> you see, my television viewers are only with me for about 45 minutes per week. But this flat of mine sits, well, the audience here, sits here for about 24 hours a day. <laughs> and they're bored witless <laughs> in the small hours of the morning. But what other star gets a round of applause when she gets out of bed in the morning and cleans her teeth? <laughs> Can you imagine Madonna getting a standing ovation every time she rummages for a pair of unladdered pantyhose? <laughs> but to tell you the truth, I get my biggest hand in the smallest room possible. <laughs> but make yourself useful. Please make yourself useful, audience. You know, I mean, hoover the rugs, take out the rubbish, give the dogs a bit of a walk. Otherwise, everything would have to be left to my old friend and bridesmaid, Madge Allsop. Hello, Madge. <laughs> there she is. Every time I see her, she looks more and more like something that's been excavated from a peat bog, don't you? <laughs> I have to be a little bit cruel. I have to be cruel to be kind. And if I want to be very kind to Madge, I have to be very cruel. I'm sorry, but I do. In fact, I love her so much, I'm willing to be utterly monstrous to her problems. <laughs> But what other New Zealand droob gets a chance to make the beds upstairs for a former Prime Minister, a former First Lady, a former sparring partner to Sylvester Stallione, a former <laughs> gorgeous 60s pop idol? Because, you see, my guests tonight are Ted Heath and Melba Marcos, Dolph Lundgren and... First Lady of Song, my gorgeous friend, Dusty Springfield! Exciting, the badge, Madge, the badge. <laughs> You're looking. Oh, I didn't land on you. Isn't that amazing? There you I had are. nightmares about those stairs last night. Oh, oh don't worry. Oh. Same, same. Oh, excuse our dusty. Oh. I'll make myself comfortable. Hello. Hello. Who is it? Large. It's Ted Heath here. Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> You're downstairs, are you? Yes, I am. I'm waiting. Oh, darling, really? Well, look, I'm not quite ready for you yet, Mr. <laughs> Heath. I'm sorry. Just hang around down there for a minute, will you, darling? Oh, dear. <laughs> busy night? Oh, it's always busy here at Everidge Towers, Dusty. Oh, be glamorous. Dusty. Yes. Now, that's not your real name, is it possible? No, I'm still trying to find the so-and-so that gave me that name. It's oh, sort of no, I'd like it. It's quite yes, a raunchy like a little name. Country singer. It is, but 
What is your real name, dare I ask? Mary Isabel Catherine Bernadette O'Brien. It's a good Polish name. Isn't it's it? lovely. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, we've got some Poles in the audience tonight, Bob. Yeah. It's a good Polish man. It's certainly not a Church of England name. I'll put. No, it is not. I'll put it that way. Oh, no. I'm trying to think of you. Get a little picture of you as a kitty, my darling Dusty. Oh dear. Must no, be. you're beautiful. Uh, you are. But we all had our little juvenile origins. I was a. Well, I wasn't the beautiful person I am now when I was a kiddie. I was, <laughs> you know, I was a little bit plain, to tell you the truth. Mm. I, I can't believe it's, that. It's hard to believe. I, I, I know. know. Metamorphosis. I beg your pardon, darling? Never mind. It's <laughs> not catching. <laughs> what were you like? Tell me. Paint a little. Hideous. Hideous, hideous. No, I was a very... Um, a very large child for a small child, if you know what I mean. I, I was sort of the kind of child that... No one could think of anything else to say, but doesn't she have lovely colouring? Oh, no. They say, these are you <laughs> Lovely feet. I know, when I used to call people vivacious, it always meant they oh, were yes. chatterboxes. Hurt. Hurt. Hurt is another yes, one. And when a girl was light on her feet, she was always enormously <laughs> fat. Well, again, or, or a girl with strong features, was yeah. as ugly as <laughs> sin. <laughs> the elephant woman. <laughs> what was your hair colouring? Red. Extremely red. Wow. Yeah, there was a, my mother used to put those awful corkscrews, you know, ringlets, and I could sit on them. Oh, could you? It was I most was... uncomfortable. I spent a lot of time with my chin like this. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking of the hair on your head as a matter oh. of fact. <laughs> have a permissive audience somewhere. <laughs> you were a war baby, weren't you, Possum? Yes, oh, yes, Can you remember those horrible times? Oh, well, a certain amount about it. I mean, most of it was just sort of noise. I didn't live in London. Oh, we yeah. were sort of so you weren't bombed. evacuated, I think the word is. Evacuated. All of us, parents and all. I got my parents to come with me. I probably would have had a whole lot more fun had they not come. But you had enough to eat, I hope. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Uh, but after the war, it's funny because... Uh, I'd never seen a banana, because in those days they used to queue up for an orange, right? But I'd definitely never seen a banana, and I always remember the first time, it was about a year or two after the war, and it has frightened me for life, actually, because my mum had this banana behind her back, which I subsequently found out it was a banana. She goes, stick them up! And I went, ah! And it's frightened me for life. I swear to God, my entire... Oh, life dear, what woman doesn't remember her first sight of a banana back <laughs> I do. Yes, I do too. In fact, I wish I'd seen my first one during the blackout. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's a, you're a pioneer. <laughs> now, you mightn't think that, but that's the word I'm giving to you, my dearest Dusty. A pioneer. Because you pioneered a look. That's a special kind of panda look it was. Yes, it's somewhat, <laughs> somewhat modified these days. I still have a very soft spot for pandas. They are my favourite animals after cats. I adore cats. them. Yeah. But I love that. It was the mascara look that you pioneered, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I mean obviously that came from being so short-sighted. I mean, you know how it is. Are you short-sighted or well, not? no. I, I see. These old eyes don't miss me. Oh, I bet they don't. <laughs> no, but actually, if you... If you you have to take your glasses off to put your eyes on, then you can't really see what you're doing, so you put too much on, oh. and that's how it came simple about. Simple as that. It is very simple. Did you ever try contact lenses, Dusty? Yeah, but I've always got cat hair in my eyes, so it doesn't really work. It hurts too much. <laughs> you shouldn't let those cats sit on your face, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hobby. <laughs> You pioneered again the sort of <laughs> the sort of bouffant, beehive look. You must have got through a lot of hair lacquer in those days. I still do. You probably <laughs> had your own <laughs> hole in the ozone layer. <laughs> they make a large contribution, I think. You see yeah, right. Madge here. Yes. Oh, she was into henna not very long ago. <laughs> <laughs> She used to fill the bath with henna. It was a ghastly sight to see her sitting up in it. She'd come out of it half tandoori. <laughs> <laughs> she had permanent red pantyhose for a couple of weeks, didn't she? <laughs> you bet. I don't know if you have, ever have this problem, but there are a lot of wannabe Edna's. There's a lot of Edna clones. As a matter of fact, I hear people do me at parties. Oh, I bet they do. I wish they'd let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's a 
a lot of wannabe dusties too. Well, they certainly were. I mean, it, it was, it did set up a look. Well, it is somewhat on, sort of on the old Ready Steady Go days. It was a bit sort of weird seeing people <laughs> domed creatures, you know, with the beehives and black eyes, because that's all I could see with these sort of little clones. It's spooky, isn't it's it? It's extremely spooky. I once went and there was an Edna Park. And you know, they're even Madge lookalikes now. They yeah. have Madge parties <laughs> <laughs> on Halloween, mostly. <laughs> There's a word that's applied to us. Survivor. Oh dear. Do you like that epithet? Do you like it? No. <laughs> no it sort of implies something in the, in the Antarctic or something. I think so. Or Sorry. someone. Well, as though they're clinging to the wreckage. It's as though because when they life, call you a yes. survivor. Yeah. You're very far from being a survivor, Dusty Springfield. You've been honing your artistry. You know, a day at a time this woman has been growing and developing and it's now, I think, a very mature and very beautiful artist it is here with me tonight. <laughs> and I want to hear, I want to hear something which could be the climax of your career, an aspect of the gentling of Dusty Springfield, kind of if I may say so. Your new song, In Private, would you sing it just for me? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
Rusty's big new hit single, beautifully performed. My son Kenny mimes to all of your records. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do. I've wondered for a long time who actually sang them, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and now I know. We'll see you all after this comfort stop. <laughs> It's a bit of a mutual admiration society. Dusty's been saying how well I look, and I've been saying how well she looks. I want to know what creams you use. Oh, it darling, so it's smooth. It's inward. It's something spooky. Oh, yeah. A lot of Edna watchers all over the world have been saying how different I look, as though I'm glowing, uh, I'm vibrant, radiant, <laughs> fulfilled is the word that crops up a lot, and I am. Uh, thanks to the man upstairs, and I don't mean <laughs> oh, I don't mean a power greater than myself. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean my present house guest. <laughs> yes, up in his room, pumping iron, <laughs> occasionally caressing the new leather jacket I've bought him. Ladies and gentlemen, my resident toy boy, Dolph Lundgren! <laughs> Darling, you sit look wonderful. Down. I'm feeling wonderful. Yeah, I love that dress. Oh, it's beautiful. You've yeah. never seen this before. I didn't I wear this to the Caprice when we went for dinner the other night. Oh, no. <laughs> the tongues were wagging after that, <laughs> possums. And I want everyone to know, and I'm sure you'd mm. like me to make this statement, mm -hmm. Dolphy, that <laughs> our relationship is completely platonic. It is. Mm. Until we, in the mm. fullness of time, as intelligent, <laughs> Mm. Grown-up people mm. elect of our own accord to play cars and garages. I love the way you put that. It's just so romantic. It know? will be romantic, <laughs> isn't it? And it yeah. will be when it happens, yeah. if it happens. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Dolph. <laughs> you know, Lord is the name of my ex. And uh, he really is an ex. His grave is marked by a cross. Oh. <laughs> but what about your little ex, Grace Jones? I don't really want to hear much about it, but how did you meet, Dolph? No, we met um, over a sandwich in, in Australia, actually. <laughs> did your parents approve, though? She's an unusual uh, type of a woman. Well, my, my father was a little hesitant. I mean, he liked everything but the crew cut, so... Um, <laughs> well, she does look a little bit yeah. spooky sometimes, darling. Well, it's, I'm very glad you, you, you may put it that way, yes. You're moving towards... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're moving towards a more normal type of woman now. Yes. Of course. Yes. She's, she's got a bit of a Grace Jones fixation, Dolph. Really? The other night I found her in the bathroom blacking up, you know. Really? Using the mascara wand in a fashion for which it was not intended. <laughs> like, what happened when you, well, fell from Grace in a manner of speaking? <laughs> Well, boy, you're so clever, darling. Well, there was Paula. There was Paula. Yes, it was. Well, but she was she was wonderful, Paula. She was pretty. She was pretty. She was. Did you meet at a party or in a concert or a restaurant? Mm, almost. It was in a bed with uh, th two other women. <laughs> that was a case of overbooking, if ever I. Actually, I mean... it was. <laughs> Uh, it was a photo shoot. It's always difficult finding a foursome, though, isn't it? I mean, oh, excuse sorry, me. Sorry, sorry. Sooner do I look at it than it rings. Hello? 
It's Ted Heath here again. Oh. I'm still here, then, Edna. Oh, darling. It's cold out here. Can't you, can't you at least press a buzzer so I can come into the foyer? Oh. That's the French for the hall. All right, darling. <laughs> if I must, you importunate, impatient man, I'll let you in. Oh, come up to the top floor, Mr. Heath. Bless his heart. Oh. Oh. I forgot about him. I completely forgot about him. He's been freezing to death down there. there. Dusty, can you possibly believe this gorgeous man was actually beaten by Sylvester Stallione in, what was it, Rocky 15? <laughs> Ray. Impossible to believe. Must have hit him in the knees. He's very small. <laughs> He's so trim. He You're so lean. How do you do it? Uh, I, uh, I work out with uh, Madge. Yeah. You work out with Madge? Madge, of course. Yeah. At what time in the morning does this occur, Privy? <laughs> what do you do exactly? <coughs> One second. I can't believe this. All right. Do you really want to know? Yes. All right, Madge. Okay, doll. Let's show them. Come on. Come on, don't be afraid. Well, let's do one of these. Oh, okay. One. Two. Oh dear, it's, Madge, the badge for Dolph, please. It's innocent, it's innocent. Oh, and it was quiet. Sake. Yeah. No wonder I didn't Sorry, hear it. Dolph. There we are. Where's that name? Possums, most upmarket London penthouses, and uh -oh. probably penthouses all over the world, Dolph mm. and Dusty, uh -huh. have a, a very highly trained Filipino staff, and mine is no exception, yeah. except the little woman who smilingly vims my vanity unit is my next guest. She's the former first lady of all the Filipinos. Yes, Amelda Marco! The indicator on my lift tells me. Oh, by the way, that dog, don't worry, she's all right. My dog has no teeth. She <laughs> just had a very nasty suck. <laughs> the indicator on my lift tells me my next guest has reached penthouse level. Ladies and gentlemen, former Prime Minister of England, nautical identity, musical prodigy, the Right Honourable Edward Heath. Marvellous. And did that tune mean anything special? Oh, yes. When you're smiling? Quite a lot. That was my signature tune when I had a band in my regiment during the war, the first war, the second war. I was born in the first war. And, uh, like you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we chose that as our signature tune. 
And this was really to relieve the periods of boredom during the war when we weren't in action. And we had a very good band. We were very lucky. There were lots of good players in the, in the battery. And of course, those were the days of the big bands, Jack Payne, Jack Hilton, and so on. And so we had a big band. Oh, and, and we used to play Tiger Rag and all the exciting things like that. I love those big bands. There was a band led by someone called Ted Heath, and for You're many years right. I confused the two of them. Oh, no, surely not. Well, well we so Australians, you know. Oh, of course, yes. Some, uh, <laughs> I once had a, a letter which uh, was a very good illustration of this, because I was Minister of Labour at the time. And my private secretary came in and he said, I think you'd like to see this letter. And uh, he'd folded over the covering letter, and it was from a man who had had a very rough time. And he said, I've been unemployed so many years, nobody does anything about it. Your Minister of Labour, can't you do something for me? You are my last resort. And uh, he'd signed it. And then I turned it over, and the covering letter said, Dear Ted Heath, I think this one's for you. Yours sincerely, the other Ted Heath. <laughs> They delivered it to the band leader. Delightful. Well, we're very... The badge, Madge, please. Sorry, Mr. Heath. Thank you, darling. Just in case I forget people's names. Yeah. That's the Australian way of looking at it, isn't it? Well, it is. I, I must say, though, that it's gorgeous to have you because you are not just a politician. I think it's, it's marvellous to be a politician, but I'm a bit of a Renaissance person. I can turn my hand to a lot of things. Really? And, well, I can. And, uh, you can, yeah. Oh. I, I sing, I sing and I'm a bit of an ambassador for Australia, too. You sing, but I didn't think you were very musical when I heard you sing. Well, you listen very carefully at the end of the show, <laughs> possum. <laughs> Little Dusty and I are going to sing a duet, aren't That's we, Dusty? Good. God help oh, yeah. <laughs> But you're a friend of the arts, and you began life really as a musician, didn't you? Well, uh, I began life, I suppose, as a, as a fairly poor boy. My, my father was a carpenter. Uh, my mother, when she married him, was a maid, and uh, we never had very much money. And I knew that if I was going to do anything in school, I had to do it on a scholarship, which I did. But I was always uh, immensely interested in music. And uh, they encouraged it, my parents, and my brother as well. My brother uh, became a violinist. And uh, then at school, I did a great deal of music, a massive music. I sang in the church choir. When my voice broke, then I played the church organ. And uh, I didn't start conducting until I was 15. Quite a story of achievement, because you were transplanted from where your home into the University of Oxford. That's quite right. Through so your organ uh, scholarship. It was really yes. an organ transplant, yes. in a way. <laughs> But I you knew you'd try to get it in somewhere. <laughs> well. Dolph, Dolph, my neck, darling, my neck. Oh, oh. Darling, please. Please. Help her out. Yeah, please. Sure. Of course. Oh, Always. Um, I'm jealous, but... Were your parents very, very proud of you? Yes, they were. Um, I think to begin with they were disappointed because my father very much wanted me to become... <laughs> my father very much wanted me to become an accountant. And uh, I didn't like the idea. I said that uh, looking after people's figures was a very sterile occupation. Yes. So... Uh, <laughs> That's lovely, darling. Thank you. Much nicer. I refuse, sir. No, no, I refuse to be an accountant. But, and he lived until he was 88. And just before he died, he said to me, well, you became prime minister, but I still wish you'd taken up a respectable occupation. <laughs> Thank you, Dolph. Lovely, right. darling. It's funny, isn't it? Because my mother still can't adjust to the fact that I'm a megastar. It's, it's, it's extraordinary that our parents have some kind of a fantasy ambition for us, but it's, it's nice to please them. I sometimes think that my parents were unpleasable, oh. Mr. Heath. No, no, surely not. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you entered Downing Street, it was, of course, after Mr. McMillan's operation, wasn't it? He had a prostate operation, much the same as my husband. <laughs> But uh, we had an interval of six years with Mr. Wilson there. Oh, yes. After Mr. McMillan. Did then you? I went in in 1970. Straight after the Wilsons? I went straight in after Wilson, yes. And uh, they said, I'm sorry, we've got to tell you that this place has got dry rot. <laughs> so I said, that's been the trouble. I hadn't realised that. <laughs> 
And I said, well, then get on and clear it all out. And, of course, the usual thing happened, that uh, they said, we'll do the big parlour first. And then they said, oh, I'm sorry, it's gone into the blue parlour. And then they said, oh, we're sorry, it's gone into the white parlour. And the they spent all that riddled. time. Absolutely, with dry rot. Yeah. Well, did you have all to through, redecorate much after that? All through Mr. That? Wilson's administration. Was there much and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I had the whole of number 10 redone. And, of course, I found that upstairs in the private flat, their main decoration was uh, enamel plaques with flying ducks on them. You know, <laughs> which, uh, wasn't really quite my line. So well, we're we coming back that. into fashion now, Mr. Heath. Well, Funnily enough, I've got them in my own home. Uh, no. But there's, it's a revival. I mean, I've got them up there because it's... Well, it's chic. It's a new thing. I it see. Is. I suppose the poor Wilsons were outside number 10 watching what you put in the skip. <laughs> <laughs> did, they, did they ever see the house after you'd redecorated it? Yes, they did, because I had a, f a great party for everybody who had helped and so on. And you I wouldn't invited have recognised it, poor darlings. That was no, a bit but mean. No, Mary was very nice about it. She said, well, if, if we come back, we'll change all of this again. <laughs> so I saw the ducks flying in. You know. But she is nice, isn't no, she? I adore nice. Mary She's Wilson. a delightful person. Of course, she was Harold Wilson's hostess. And did you have someone to look after your guests, or did you do it single-handed? Oh, I did it uh, with two hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I looked after it myself. And I think uh, you can do this perfectly well. And I think so too, but I mean, who looks after Mr. Heath? That worries me as a yeah. bit of a motherly, clucky type of a woman. I but, mean, uh, when there's a little bit of spinach on your teeth, who tells you? <laughs> when there's, a, when there's a little bit of shaving cream on your ears, who tells you? I don't use it. I don't use shaving cream. Oh. I just look in the mirror if I think there's anything on my teeth. Oh, do you? Well, yes. I so oh, that's true. all right. That, that doesn't worry me at all. Do you and have we used to have a lot of uh, entertaining at number 10 and a great deal of music. Music the whole time. Oh, lovely. Very exciting. My darling, tell me this. At the moment, do you have, well, staff? I mean, do you have anyone very special who looks after your home? Oh, yes. Yes, I have... Uh, a housekeeper who looks after my home okay. uh, in Salisbury. Yorkshire uh, type of a woman? No, she's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. She's... Uh, Are you sure you know what I mean? She's a Wiltshire woman. A Wiltshire and, uh, woman. And delightful. in London? In London, I have uh, a Spanish lady. How oh, spooky. spooky. It is, because oh. I have two Spanish... Help us. Oh, well, you can What's afford it. I can't. Called? What's her name? <laughs> Mine is Teo. Teo? Yes. Oh, um, I have a cleaning lady called Purification. <laughs> and, uh, and I have another little Spanish helper called Contracepción. <laughs> she's, she's, How'd you get the two to work together? <laughs> You're making me do it now. <laughs> no, she always wears the rubber gloves. <laughs> strong women. Do you like strong women? No. I, <laughs> do you it's know? not those who say that. Strong. I, I like very feminine women. Well, I'm going to let you into a secret, which I doubt is much of a secret from perceptive man like you. I'm a strong woman, but I've retained my femininity. <laughs> and I'm very, very proud of that. Mm. And yet I get a lot of calls from the current Prime Minister at all hours of the day and night asking for advice. <laughs> Does she about? still ring you by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't run me for 13 well, years. She's, <laughs> <laughs> she, she might be <laughs> soon, so <laughs> She's asking you for advice about femininity. What? Yes, how can I become softer, she says. Yes. The other night she woke me at three in the morning, driving me mad. Where is Hong Kong, she said. <laughs> she said, she said, Edna, Edna, she was crying. She said, how do I pronounce Ich bin ein Berliner? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> she said, how do I pretend to like the environment? It's so difficult. <laughs> You know, but of course, Maggie, and I've given her what advice I could as a woman because yes. we're all sisters under the skin. But uh, has it had any effect? Well, not noticeably. <laughs> <laughs> sisters? Well, it's very important to me. We're, we're sisters in a way, too, aren't we, Dustin? Yeah. You know, I feel very close to you. We are. I, I feel a song coming on. <laughs> Excuse me. I... Sister, sister, there were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no, sir. I'm here to keep an eye on her, caring, sharing every little thing that we are wearing. When a certain gentleman arrived from Rome, I wore the frock. Whatever.